so good morning everyone uh, what initially i thought of doing after that uh, uh, discussing about the human vision was to uh, discuss about some image denoising some pre processing operations that you had to do in many of the computer vision applications so i thought of actually having an introductory lecture on digital images as well for those who did my medical imaging course or any other course this would be more of a review and for others uh, this would give you some basic uh, uh, idea about dealing with the images that's what we would do in this uh, uh, class and then from the next class onwards we will move on to uh, other image processing techniques okay so let's have an introduction to digital images uh, so first question would be when can we image an object okay this is uh, irrespective of whether it is a digital camera or even our human vision the statements that we are going to make here holds good like for example in a if you want to image any uh, something an object you need to have a sensor that is capable of detecting energy radiated uh, by that so for example you have to use a you want to image certain thing so in general you could say um, that you need to use a particular um, uh, a particular uh, frequency of light to, for doing this and then you would require uh, a sensor that could detect that's on one thing on, on one hand and on the other hand you also need to look at the relationship between the wavelength or frequency which are interchangeably you could use of that particular wavelength of light versus the object that you would like to image so these are essentially two aspects when you can image right so those are of course the what you require um, in order to get the image of a given object okay so this is uh, every one of you is familiar with this on how do you get an image this is the second uh, aspect that we are looking at you need a source of energy illumination right for example this could be the light sunlight coming or the light you have in your room and then this is falling upon an object and this gets reflected right and of course while reflecting you would be using let's say to converge that light or to manipulate it in a particular fashion you might be having an amazing system which would take care of converging that light in the way you want and then you would capture the light reflecting from this object okay and then of course you would do a processed version let's say if you are looking at a digitized version of it as for example you would call it as a digital image what exactly is digitized we will come very shortly but <clears throat> i'm sure um, every one of you is comfortable on how you acquire an image with this so what i'm doing here is there is a source of light there is an object light is falling on it i am looking at the reflected light can there be any other way of acquiring the image also um, sir like uh, how we process x ray images right so we very good so maybe can you just uh, continue on that to uh, illustrate in what way is that going to be different uh, we project the light onto a film and the uh, object actually blocks some x rays right it's not reflected rather it is uh, uh, like whatever x rays pass through the object that is captured very good excellent that's what i was in fact expecting uh, it need not necessarily all the time the reflected light it could also be the light that got transmitted through the object that can also tell you the information about the object the best example as uh, you have rightly pointed out is an x ray imaging so if you recollect the way x ray has been taken on the back of you there is an x ray source you are standing in between the source and the film here and the x ray has been passed and the the uh, the x rays that got transmitted through this object is what you are capturing there so this would uh, fit into the general way how we capture images using our digital cameras or uh, in other words even our mobiles we could use we could even say no as mobile right or slrs whatever it is this is the way but just remember that this is not the only way to capture okay and of course 
uh, if you want to further generalize it, this need not be always the light source. Okay, X-ray, uh, X-ray is another example as one as you have said. So you could use. There is another thing you could. You might use a radioactive material as well, and you might study its properties and how it is decaying and its properties <clears throat> with respect to the object. So there are different ways, but. Uh, for a computer vision course, this is good enough to begin with. But at the same time, uh, keep it in your mind that this is not the only way that you could capture the images. Okay, let's now uh, converge more to the special case of digital image. Okay, because whole computer vision, when, what we discussed, the moment you are doing a processing with a computer, what you had is in fact a digital image, right? There are two phenomena that would happen. The moment you are acquiring a digital image, you could tell it based on your knowledge of digital signal processing. All of you have done it. And I'm afraid I am the one who taught uh, the third year students. So I would expect an answer here. So sampling. Right. Good. And what else? Another aspect. <laughs> Very good, very good. Quantization is something we have not discussed in depth. Okay, and these days, quantization has becoming uh, uh, less and less important as such because uh, I mean, still it is important. It's just that uh, we won't be discussing uh, too much about the quantization methods. But these are the two phenomena that would happen. On one side, the sampling, and the second one is quantization. <clears throat> So uh, just by looking at this, can you tell what it means? Can you explain the phenomena of sampling? Assume that this is your digital image. Can you explain me the phenomena of sampling? What exactly it means here? So for each pixel, it is taking only the average value of the intensity, which is coming in that area of the pixel. Right, that's right. So it is not, if you look at the, <clears throat> sorry. If you look at the spatial position, of it right of the image the spatial position is a continuous variable but the moment you are digitizing something okay so you can give you you can give an index to it you you, you cannot have something like 1.23456 so on and on and on going on it's different again maybe uh, to have a contrast to this argument, you could think of again an X-ray film keeping it, not a digital version of X-rays that you see these days uh, in the advanced uh, digital radiographies. But there, you in fact have a continuous thing available there. But the moment you are digitizing something, okay, uh, once you have a digitized version, you could have only samples of the real one, okay, be it even the audio signal that you are capturing here, while what I am speaking is of continuous nature. The moment it is captured by the microphone is you, it can only take, of course, if you want, you can take more number of samples. That's all you could do. But it's not like uh, how, however number, many number of samples or many ever some number of samples you are taking, there is a limit to it, okay? So that's where sampling is there. That's something is telling you in a spatial location. So once you are essentially representing one region, a, 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 some predefined region with just one value. That's what the sampling is. And what about quantization? Uh, quantization is actually um, when we approximate a number that maybe if the pixel intensity is there, we approximate it such that uh, um, it is digitally storable. Correct. Very good. So why do we need to quantize? What, what is the need here to quantize? Is it because we can't uh, store continuous values? It's That's not right. feasible. That's right. That's right. Very good. So it is not like, suppose I might have intensity there as to uh, some 100.123456 and going on and on. There is a limit up to which I have to store. See, it is not only it is the spatially to have limited number of points that is where sampling is coming. Even at those spatial locations, whatever is the value that I could have, there is a, into that intensity value also, there is a limitation. So that is where quantization is coming. So what would dictate the quantization is number of bits that you are using to store that particular intensity values. It is that, which would uh, dictate how much uh, distinction in intensities 
uh, I can store there, right? So, for example, what are the typical number of bits used uh, in uh, JPEG and all these images to store intensity value at a given pixel? Eight bits. Eight bits, correct. So, as we discussed here, assume that this is your again. Um, keep it in mind that we are all showing what anything that I'm showing is in fact a uh, digital version, but to give you a feel, we are drawing it in a different way. That's all. Okay. This is just for an illustration. Okay. So this is you assume that your original image. Okay. You take one, one line of it um, for a detailed analysis. So that would look if you take, if you take the profile of it, this is how it is looking like. Just that you cannot store every value here. <clears throat> you take certain number of uh, you take the values at a regular intervals here that's you are sampling the actual values at regular intervals this is what the sampling is about then you could see here there are very finer variations could be there and uh, there is a tolerance level with which you could uh, distinguish one from the other uh, the very moment you are uh, it happens the very moment you are going to store them uh, these values digitally uh, okay so that is where you would see then this would get approximated to these values so this is the sampling that uh, gives you the spatially how many points you have okay how many samples you have and quantization tells you how with what uh, uh, tolerance or precision you could uh, distinguish the intensity nearby intensity values so that comes from quantization okay so that's again uh, is showing you a similar thing you could notice here um, any block here you take for example okay there is a variation within that but the moment you have it here there is a single value here and because of the quantization for example originally this intensity might be having a slightly different value from here but if your quantization value is not good enough if they are not they might not be separable when you are doing it uh, quantization so they might end up uh, represented with the same value and now within each grid it is equivalent to saying what's the um, value you would assign a same value to that whole grid uh, where you you have took the sample so the sample is now a representative of that whole area okay so Although uh, this uh, you won't realize in 2D images very prominently that the rate at which you are sampling would tell you in physically if you look at here, for example, a distance of X would correspond to something distance of Y corresponds to something. See, you could change the rate at which you are sampling in the X and Y that would tell you physically also there are there is on one side there is a pixel now, pixel i'm sure you all know it but anyway we would just have a for the sake of completion in the next coming slides we'll discuss a bit more about it but let me now use for the time being the word pixel okay so the pixel could have could represent in x a different distance and also in y it could have a different distance so this mapping from pixel domain to the other one is usually referred to as spatial domain they could be varying okay hope that point is clear then uh yeah just to spatial and gray level resolution so sampling is giving you the spatial resolution and the gray level resolution is dictated by your quantization now the um, uh, the very important question always we face with this how to determine the sampling rate so it is in fact dependent on what? So can we say a generic answer or is there something that tells us uh, 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 whether how we could do and when we could do that? So what is it that dictates what should be my sampling rate? Sir, is it uh, determined by how we perceive the image? So um, hmm. if- Yes, uh, to an extent you are right. That is one perspective of it. So can you be add any other thing to that? That is in fact true. Uh, beyond a particular uh, uh, level of finer details, we might not pursue, perceive. So that is accepted. But can you tell me any other point as well? And what is it that dictates what should be the sampling rate? The higher frequency levels of in the image. Yes. Uh, image means what do you, yeah, you are in fact right. So object and then of course it's, uh, uh, it's a twin here is the image. So it depends on what the content is there 
in a given image that's also is very important and of course if you go deeper then uh, other camera parameters and the angle that you are looking and all also does matter because this being 3d to 2d transformation but for the time being keeping them all aside what it is more important is what are all the frequencies that are there in a, um, that we need to capture in a given image assume that uh, instead of these checks i have more dominant uh, uh, very closely placed checks in a particular uh, fashion on my shirt okay and if you are looking at the same image with a low resolution or uh, with a with a high sam your sampling distance is more then what would happen you would see artifacts there what's the reason because the frequency content that you are going to see has high frequencies in order to appropriately capture those high frequencies right you should have enough number of samples again here we are all making certain assumptions here given that the signal is band limited okay and of course uh, otherwise also you could some make it band limited by applying some high pass filtering uh, sorry low pass filtering and all okay but in general if we want to make a statement is that you you should suppose assuming that the finer level frequency or the highest frequency that you want to capture in a given image is omega subscript n so with the nyquist rate of 2 omega n uh, if you capture it then you would not end up with any aliasing effects okay anyway i would again come back to uh, this concept of uh, aliasing in 2d and all a little later but uh, given that you all have the dsp background i am quite sure that you could make some sense out of what we are just now discussed then let's move on to uh, the representation of an image so how do we represent a given image is you all know this is that for example my sampling is let's say i have 256 rows for a given image uh, and 256 columns so that means i have those discrete 256 by 256 samples i have taken of a given object now so this could eventually depending on the way it got reflected or it could be transmitted so let's for the time being restrict ourselves to reflected light okay when it got reflected assume that the object properties are are uh, encoded are represented now in terms of the intensities there which are let's say now we are using assume that you are using 0 to 258 bit integers okay so it which could uh, represent from 0 to 255 so that's all you have values here okay some values here suppose yeah here in this case this has been normalized to 0 to 1 so you are using a uh, float representation or double representation take that now in fact what you have is this one okay now what's the question is how do you represent or how do you visualize this also so this is what you have image for example here the, these all could be the rows here when you are moving from your left to right and top to bottom these are all columns and this is your origin and of course this uh, uh, what uh, the convention of what you consider as your origin whether this should be origin this should be origin this should be origin or this corner should be origin would also vary uh, this convention could vary from tool to tool in some cases or application to application in some other cases so anyways th this is usually the convention that we would be following uh, in most of uh, the uh, our course unless specified otherwise is that your right top okay uh, sorry left side top that is what you consider as your origin and from there you could move this direction okay where it could increase the number of columns you come here which you would be moving to the next rows this is the origin and if you look at the numbers this is how it looks like there are different ways you could represent it now as so essentially notice that this is assume that uh this is your again x what do you consider as x and what you considered as y you would keep varying uh, from even tool to tool for now you consider that this is your x so when you are moving along the x direction it is the row that is varying and when you are moving along the y direction it is the column that it is varying so now if you want to represent it mathematically the way you could represent it in image is a function of x comma y can x y take any value here 
or is there any now restriction on the values that x and y can take where the x and y will be discrete that's right where, where x and y are integers right they are discrete those are the yeah discrete of course but in addition to that there's a, those are the uh, integers are to be more specific we refer to them as the indices of a given image so the value at given indices that's what this x and y uh, keep it in mind has nothing to do with the actual spatial locations these are just indexes indices right so that's telling you where you had took the samples and if you want to convert into the spatial domain you should know just like from continuous time fourier transform to uh, discrete time fourier transform if you are moving there you should know how, at which rate you have took the samples and depending that that it will get scaled in similar way from indices if you want to move to the spatial location you should be knowing the distance between the samples in the x direction and y direction okay anyways that's a detail for now so how could you represent now these numbers that's on one side the question um, well uh, you could for example take zero as the darkest so for visualization purpose zero as the black and uh, Uh, the highest intensity let's say we let's normalize and think the highest intensity being 1 so anything in between 0 that has white you could represent and the shades of gray that are moving towards the black as another intensities let's say this is the image where you have 0.5 0 and 1 just three values so this is how it would look like if you are representing it of course depending on uh, the purpose sometimes you might look at it in this manner as well where this is a 3d plot you are making surf plot or whatever where you are x and y okay then of course i'm sure you might have plot something like this at different points of uh, in uh, other courses so for example zero has a zero height one has a height one okay this x y f of x y okay you are plotting it and anything in between would have this height so you look at it as if it is a surface that's how you would look at the images again this you would see in very specific context that we will anyway discuss in more detail at that point of time most of the time this is the kind of inter this is the kind of image representation that we are going to use for visualization right so as we discussed this is i is a function the image you are now representing it as function of x and y x and y are giving you the indices of the objects in the direction of x and y and this i could be an intensity value or it can also be a color value right so how do you represent then color this is again a big question we will need three Sorry. channels we will need r g and b very right good. green and blue can Use. very good very good that's right. but for gray image just a normal array for determining it's black or white very good so if you are just using a 2d array for representation of image so basically look at here uh, what you would have essentially here is for example i have 256 rows and 256 columns okay so all i require in that case is 256 by 256 a 2d array is what i would require in order to store and manipulate and represent this image in case of a color image instead of having one uh, simple 256 by 256 let's say let's consider the same example here now i want a color image which is of size 256 by 256 now for that to be represented we would require three in fact 256 3 Uh, 2d arrays okay of 256 by 256 and now the index at each the location is now given by still x comma y at that instead of having a single value now i have there three values there and these three values just like in our human vision you have red green blue one typical way of representing it is red channel how much is the value green channel how much is the value blue channel how much is the value so this is rgb so then f of xy so suppose if you are um, dealing with a color image and want to get uh, uh, the location it's a red component how much is there usually the way you do is you use in fact a 3d array otherwise you could call it that way 
where for example if i want an x uh, xy uh, at xy what is the location x0 comma y0 what is the red value then i would say assuming that my array indexing is starting from 1 and not 0 then if i want uh, if for x0 y0 location if i want it is in fact f of x0 comma y0 comma 1 okay green channel uh, x0 y0 2 and uh, blue channel x0 y0 3 that is how i refer to that and that would be for example the size of the array would be now what would be for a given 256 by 256 images what would be the size of the array that i, I would require to represent a color image 256 cross 256 cross 3 that's right 256 cross 256 cross 3 and uh, is rgb the only way to represent color images or any other ways are also there there are other ways right can you just uh, tell when, when one of them hsv very good so there are other ways also you could represent it still you typically be using uh, three channels so you would figure out if you we are not anyway going into details of color image processing but that could be uh, one uh, topic in itself which could take quite some time so in the interest of uh, the other topics uh, more important we what we consider could be more useful at least if uh, means of course each one is important but we feel that other topics uh, applications of computer vision would be more useful for you so this considering under image processing part we are not going into detail but you could study it on your own it is not uh, uh, that difficult so there are different ways you could represent the image one is red green blue blue and another is hue saturation and value there are other things also hsi they they call it as i don't exactly remember maybe intensity itself they call it and uh, there are ways you could move from one to the other and you would uh, realize if once you go in bit more detail into it that if you are certain kinds of processing would be very efficient if you are representing the image uh, in the hsv uh, transformation then using representing it in the rgb space okay if you are representing those intensity values in hsv hue saturation and uh, value that would give you a better uh, uh, a better result there for you okay so they just it is enough if you uh, notice here that this is not the only way to represent it okay so there is some okay um yeah so another thing is i will come back now to this part suppose again um, uh, depending on the uh, the programming language that you are using be clear with where the indexes would start i think if i am not wrong if you are using c c++ the indexing of your arrays would start from zero right and if it is matlab it would start with one and i don't know about python you figure it out for yourself so assume that i have an image of size n by n okay so then what you have function of x comma y 2d image is this location for example is assume that again x is along the vertical direction y is along the horizontal direction here then this would be given by f of 0 comma 0 you move here 1 comma 0 because of the same column here okay assume that this is in this case an m by n image so capital m by capital n image so now this last row would be in that case since we started with 0 total number of rows being m this would have an index of <clears throat> m minus 1 okay now you look at in this direction the same row 0 and there are n number of columns are there it would move from 0 to n minus 1 similarly you could draw uh, you could figure out what would be the indices for any given uh, location and thus you could refer to that right so then another thing is you should be also clear on uh how much space it would be required to store that particular image again here another topic we are not at all going which falls under image processing course is uh, how do you compress an image okay that's also is not of uh, uh, the focus uh, in this course but that would tell you it's not so not ignoring that uh, compression for a moment assume that you are just simply store then there is no compression happening in a given image while you are storing it so how much 
memory would be required to store this given image assuming that each location uh, to store that intensity value you are using k bits okay because there are total m m by n number of pixels mn pixels are there so each pixel you are using k bits so the total thing will be m multiplied with n multiplied with k so many bits are required to store a given image and then uh, if you are using the next question would be if you are using k bits to store an image so in that case how many distinct gray level values can you have with it anyone so this of course you have to power k i'm sure you, you are all from the digital systems background you all know this i don't think uh, this requires uh, much of an explanation i hope right so for example if you are 0 to 2 power k minus 1 assume that the uh, number of rows and number of columns are same that you are having here as n okay and here i am giving you the number of bits used for storing the value at a given pixel okay so let's start with this okay so assume that i have a an image which has 32 rows and 32 columns so what would be the size of the image then how many pixels are there in total hello 1024 1024 right now suppose if i am assume that it's a binary image so i that means i have either black or white that i could interpret it in that manner so that means if it is i could then use simply one bit okay if that bit can be either 0 or 1 okay uh, so in that case i would require 1024 bits here now assume let's right away come to this case of 8 here okay so if i am using 8 bits okay then what is the value you could say 0000 last one is 1 right the last two digits could be 0 0 it could be 011011 and then you make the third bit change and you all look at it and you would uh, it's not difficult to figure out that uh, it uh, if you are using k your k number of bits is equal to 8 the maximum number that you could store there is 2 to power k minus 1 right and which is equivalent to 255 so including 0 you could store 256 distinct values so now anyways if you are looking at the amount of memory that would be required to store a 32 by 32 size image where at each pixel you are storing that value using 8 bits would be equal to so there are 1024 pixels at p at each pixel you have 8 bits so that would be essentially equal into 1024 multiplied with 8 those many 8 192 bits are required again if you want it what is the relationship between bit and byte eight eight bits correct hmm how many how many uh, bytes if i have 1 kilobyte how many bits are equivalent to 1 uh, sorry how many bytes are equivalent to 1 kilobyte 1024 you are right hmm good so that's how you could uh, look at it so then i you i you could make it you could tell in fact if i tell you how many bits it has how many kilobits again the same thing kilobyte uh, so 2 power 10 kilobytes is equal into 1 megabyte okay in bits you could say similarly in the bits so you should be able to now tell you how many number of kilobytes are required or megabytes are required depending on the size of the image you could pick the appropriate unit there and you could always tell again here ignoring p compression so it's not like uh, the way you represent image is not uh, the op the optimal way is not to just take each value and store in so many bits you would use compression i'm sure you would have studied it uh, in um, in communication systems or somewhere how different ways of compression a, a similar approaches would come for image also hmm. which we will not uh, be uh, as such going through it but it's enough if you know that point right so this is another uh, image that uh, tells you the effect of quantization okay so um, this should uh, tell you the importance of uh, taking enough number of bits to store so the motivation for taking minimum number of bits is memory requirement is less your transmission is easier storage is easier but the on the other hand if you are going for too small number of uh, 
bits there the very purpose of uh, capturing the image is lost for example <clears throat> this is having zero bits okay sorry this is having one bit so zero and one right this is having i think one two three four five six seven eight so you could see uh, the surrounding uh, regions you could distinguish uh, different intensities uh, uh, more accurately if you are having uh, enough number enough number of bits you are using to store the images so although uh, in in all our computer vision ones we will be mostly using the 2d images and it's very common that in 2d images you would use 8 bits and uh, that too uh, you assume that these are unsigned char okay unsigned characters that means there is no one bit is allocated um, for keeping track of intensities cannot have negative values as such that's what you use but uh, in applications for example like medical imaging where you want a more clear distinction among intensities you would go for 16 bits or even 32 bits for storing the values there but uh, most of the jpeg and all once you are storing it it's pretty common you have intensities between 0 to 255 and of course if it is a color image then still you would use 8 bits but three channels so then you could also i am sure by this time now you could calculate the memory that would be required for storing an rgb image even the size in similar lines just that it gets multiplied with 3 okay this is a 3d image is also we are showing here which uh, we have not yet uh, shown so you have multiple slices here stacked up then that's a 3d image so in that case if you are talking about 3d images this being uh, instead of being uh, a function of x f of x comma y there is a sampling happening in the z direction also so then this is a function of x comma y comma z okay that's what it is going to happen so uh, this could tell you for example in the whole image let me take a small region here okay so if you this is how visually you would see it for the computer to process it all it would see is these numbers so all the course is now about making a sense of these numbers and interpret the way we do the interpretation when we are visually seeing it for example <clears throat> it is very easy for us to make some interpretations here there is some object here this got separated here this seems to be a different structure even without knowing what the structure is we could draw some interesting inferences here okay so that making such interpretations is what the challenge we have the moment you are doing computations on top of these images formal definition of uh, an image is they would say a digital image is defined by integrating and sampling continuous data in the spatial domain so you are taking on one side sampling and uh, then within that region you are integrating the values and putting that as a representative in a way the value there because this integration also comes uh, from the sensor point of view you should have a um, limited area for sensor you cannot have a sensor with zero area right doesn't make sense there is no sensor then so when there is that so what you are getting is a signal for this uh, photo sensor so all the signal or the light falling into that particular array of your sensor is getting integrated and this you have limited number of samples also there and of course then quantization effect is also there that's the basic definition and uh, pixel this word has been um, defined in late 1960s which actually means picture elements these are all the elements that are making a picture are representing a picture so pixel comes from the abbreviation of picture elements okay that's how it has been defined and of course those of you who are going to work with 3d images uh, in medical imaging in particular there we would be calling and uh, another name by oxel because it's not representing just x and y it's also representing x y and z to re to distinguish this 2d from 3d there we would be using the word oxel which means volume elements okay that oxel word also we would be using there now yeah scalar image now it should be clear to you that if you have a number of bits you you could represent from 0 to 2 power a minus 1 and if you have 8 bits that's 0 to 2 power 8 minus 1 again here the assumption is that there is no bit assigned for keeping track of the sign of your number or integer and all values are uh, positive only or um, starts from 0 similarly if you have one bit 
you could either represent zero or one okay and uh, this is again um, this i would uh, yeah as i said there are different ways rgb q saturation and brightness is also another one is there hsi is there there are different ways okay other details here i would rather skip it it's not required for that moment okay as color images as we discussed it's a set of three for a given xy location you further how you you have three such 2d arrays right from x and y you you could look into any of those values there okay so what i did now is uh, in the lecture uh, in our moodle pace i have kept a warm up assignment for you this again uh, i i would uh, as we discussed you do it in uh, i would uh, in uh, uh, in python itself so that you will get a, uh, like familiarized with that and it's also good uh, for your placements okay and also you would be forced to learn this and i guess even in other courses like machine learning they are enforcing this which is good okay matlab you will anyway learn from other courses so this is not at all difficult to learn python and i would also recommend to go for python notebook kind of stuff so get in touch with sindhura for more details about uh, the environment and uh, the kind of things that you have to use in python so i had given very basic uh, uh, problems here to solve this is a nice database you could click on that and you will see lot of images so take some color images from there and uh, this first one is about uh, how do you manipulate the color images you will get some acquaintance with that by doing this and then you want to replace certain pixels within a given image so how do you do that you would get uh, familiarity with that and by the way the first part of your warm up assignment sorry would give you the idea about how do you read the image and how do you display the image right then manipulation of these color images you would learn and then this replacement of pixels you want to modify give values or a particular region in a given image how do you do that and then arithmetic and geometric operations you want to do so how do you do that we have given you some um, tasks to do here okay this is a i won't consider this uh, as a part of evaluation because this is too basic in falls under image processing but nevertheless unless you are comfortable with this uh, uh, you you would find it uh, uh, difficult to do the latter assignments where you need to uh, deal with the images manipulate the values write an algorithm then finally uh do those uh, mod algorithm implement that on a given image and save it and uh, visualize it okay so this i would uh, ask you i would strongly encourage you to do this don't skip this and uh, particularly those who would like to have some feedback on what they have done okay uh, if you submit it and get in touch with sindhura then okay and then she could quickly give you although not evaluated in giving you the marks if you ask her uh, she would actually give you uh, some feedback on what you could what you have done correctly and what is it that you would have done in a better way okay those kinds of feedbacks you, you could get and by the way there is a deadline we will follow the deadline strictly so there could be uh, different scenarios where your uh, uh, computer might uh, break down okay you might have some other assignment going on exams might be approaching okay it is your responsibility to take all those factors into account what are all seen unseen predicted unpredicted things you need to have buffer for that and submit all the assignments in time okay this uh, there won't be any extensions for it so if you want any feedback on these assignments then you have to submit it by 7th february so Uh, i have um, taken you could notice there i have given almost 10 days if you sit for uh, those who had already done some uh, image processing it would hardly take uh, uh, not even one hour for them okay they could finish it but i have given you 10 days of time if you are doing it for the first time maybe 2 3 hours it could take but still do it and there won't be any extensions and anyway you won't be getting marks here but if you would like to have some feedback do submit them by 7th february okay so that's all for today's class next class we would take a look into image uh, denoising methods